Hello and welcome to Open Line. I'm Starlene Stringer. The slogan of the Irving Arts Center is, it's worth the trip. And today the team there is going to tell us some of the reasons why that's true. Our guests are Arts Center Executive Director Todd Hawkins, Assistant Executive Director Cass Prince, and Exhibitions and Education Director Marcy Inman. Thank you all so much for being here. It is going to be a fun show for sure. Well, we're going to start with Todd. Let's start with the overview. So when you meet someone who's never been to the Arts Center, what do you like to tell them? Well, uh, I've been there 15 months now. I came from Brooklyn, New York, so it's definitely worth the trip. I can tell you that for sure. Um, the opportunity to come to Irving with such an incredible arts and cultural landscape was just too much to pass up. There's so much talent here. There are so many talented artists and arts organizations, and they all come together right there at the Irving Arts Center. So um, we have been working hard to make sure that we knew what the citizens of Irving wanted. Uh, we just finished an arts and cultural needs assessment, so we went out in the community to really figure out how you engage the entire community in uh, the celebration of cultural and heritage uh, and through the arts. So um, that programming has just really taken off and, and we look forward to implementing a lot of the recommendations and things that we've been hearing from, uh, from the citizens of Irving. Thank you. And Cass, now I have a question for you. I know the Arts Center is affiliated with the Smithsonian. What exactly does that mean? Well, f first, we have access to a lot of resources through the Smithsonian institutions and their museums. Um, I'll let Marcy tell you a little bit about their collections, but it was a wonderful um, partnership that was really initiated by Councilman Sam Smith who is no longer with us. And he thought the Art Center could benefit from that connection. And so we do, we have affiliations with many other institutions that are also partners with the Smithsonian. And I think it sort of bumped us up in the eyes of the community uh, in, in terms of the quality of what is at the Art Center. And um, we do have a couple of beautiful sculptures in the sculpture garden that are on long-term loan. And those certainly would, uh, most people in Irving would not be able to see unless they had come here from the Smithsonian. They're beautiful. We were taking a look at some of them. They are definitely nice yeah. and probably even better in person, I'm sure. Now, Marcy, we are going to talk about some of the special events and exhibits in just a minute, but I've mm -hmm. got to ask, is there something going on all the time for people to come to the Art Center to see? Oh, absolutely. Our visual arts program is year-round. We have four beautiful galleries in addition to the Sculpture Garden. And we always have exhibits up, and they're free and open to the public, so. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. How much does it cost to get in? It's absolutely free? It is. We've had a couple of special exhibitions that we did charge ticket admission for, but in general, um, the galleries are free. Wonderful. And we talked a little bit about the Garden Todd, but um, I was going to tell you, it's definitely an impressive building, just beautiful. And there's a lot to see outside, too, right? Uh, we have a, a very impressive sculpture garden uh, there in the front. Um, as Cass mentioned, there are some on loan from the Smithsonian and the Hirshhorn, uh, and we look forward to getting more there. Uh, but it is a beautiful building, beautiful grounds, um, the sculpture garden, and plenty to see all around. Wonderful. Cass, tell us about the guided tours. When are they offered and um, what times ex exactly? Well, f starting September 29th, we're offering tours twice a week mm. in perpetuity. Perhaps. <laughs> Thursdays at 6.30 and then Sundays at 2.30. And there have always been special tours for exhibitions as, as uh, they've come in, but these will be standing tours that people will be able to attend year-round, and there'll always be something in one of the galleries um, that will be the focus of the tour. Okay, and Marcy, do they only um, have people come in individual groups, or do people come with school groups and neighborhood organizations? Well, as Cass mentioned, we've always offered special tours for groups and school groups and daycare groups, and we will still do that on request. Okay. But uh, what is new is that we're offering these standing tours. So every Thursday and mm. every Sunday, uh, anybody that wants to come and learn more about one of our exhibitions, we'll, we'll be offering those and we'll have specially trained docents that will, will lead the tours. Wonderful. Now, Todd, let's come back and talk a little bit about the assessment that was done. I understand there was a recent arts and cultural needs assessment which took place. Can you walk us through the process? I mean, why was it done? Um, certainly. I, I, one of the reasons I think that, that it was so necessary is that you know, as an arts programmer, I could come from uh, Brooklyn, New York, and tell everybody in Irving these great programs to do, but unless it comes from the community, unless there is buy-in and engagement from the community, you, 
you don't really have the the power of the arts that you can really take care of and, and, and have um, engagement at a level that would be sustainable. So we wanted to get out and make sure that we knew what the community wanted. We did a, a paper survey, an online survey, and several town halls throughout the city, all four libraries and all four, you know, East, West, and the South Library, uh, as well as a couple of town halls at the Irving Arts Center. And what we found was, uh, and part of the docent-led program every Thursday and Sunday came out of the needs assessment was really accessibility and we wanted to make sure that everyone felt welcome to come into the Arts Center, that they would find something enjoyable, that they would understand what was going on and that they would know that they were welcome to come back. So the tours are one way to really get out of the community and say, come in, we'll explain everything, it's a wonderful experience, you will leave more knowledgeable, uh, you will hopefully know more about yourself and more about the world of art. Wonderful. So people were saying that they wanted to feel welcome. What else did you get from the information you gathered? What were the results and what actions will be taken? I think you know, there was always a sense that the Irving Arts Center was such a, the best kept secret. It was right there in the middle of town, but maybe not everyone knew where it was. So we have a sense of, of wanting to get out into the community more, doing festivals, being participant, uh, participants in festivals in um, neighborhoods with different uh, ethnic groups. I think one of the most incredible things about Irving is its diversity. Mm. Um, we have the most um, diverse zip code in America here in Irving. And really harnessing that and, and figuring out how people celebrate their heritage and, and culture and, and bringing people together to celebrate that for all of us. Sure. So we want to make sure that, that it's an authentic invitation that everyone understands they can come into the center, but all, that all of our programming is for all citizens in Irving. I'm glad you brought that up because Cass, I want to talk about some of the special exhibits and events that go on. And I know right now one of the big ones taking place involves Islamic art. Can you tell us a bit about it? I'm going to defer to Marcy on that okay. because she is the one that has worked with the curator from the um, Texas Muslim Women's Foundation. Okay. And, uh, uh, she's got a little bit more knowledge in that area than I do. Yeah, happy to speak about it. Well, as Todd mentioned uh, with the needs, the cultural needs assessment, uh, we're really making an effort to reach out into the community and um, looking for participation. And uh, an organization came to us, the Islamic Art Revival Series, which is a program of the Texas Muslim Women's Foundation. And for four years, they had organized an international exhibition of contemporary Islamic art. And it had been uh, featured at other venues in the North Texas area. Uh, but they came to us wanting to uh, have it at our facility. And uh, we were very excited about it. And this year, we are hosting the fifth annual. It is an international juried competition. Um, the juror is the associate curator from the Metropolitan Museum of Art from the mm -hmm. Islamic Art Department. So there's already a great deal of cachet involved with that. But uh, we have this beautiful exhibit featuring 53 artists from around the world. We have almost 12 different countries represented and over 20 states in the United States represented. Wow. And it's art in all kinds of media. Uh, and it's art that's inspired by Islamic art and architecture and music and literature. And these are artists of all different faiths and backgrounds working in all different kinds of media. And it is truly a stunning exhibition. It is really a coup for all of us, I think. <laughs> we got a little sneak peek of it there while you yeah. were talking about it, and it is beautiful. Uh, Marcy, I know for the viewers that are watching this right now, they're watching it live because it mm -hmm. will air again, but for those watching it live, they still have an opportunity to attend a very special event that's taking place on October 9th. Can you tell us about the Family Fun Day? Yes, happy to. Uh, Family Fun Day is a monthly program the Arts Center offers the second Sunday of every month. Uh, we've actually expanded the program now, so it is monthly, not quarterly like it used to be. But it is a fun-free opportunity for families to come in uh, from 1 to 4. It's a, it's a drop-in, come-and-go activity, and uh, they can work on art projects that are inspired by current exhibitions. So for October the 9th, our inspiration is the Contemporary Islamic Art Exhibition. So we'll be focusing on geometric art and abstract art. Thank you. And Todd, I have to ask, what do you hope people get out of seeing the Islamic art that's on display? 
Um, I think what we're really stressing, and, and what the, even the curator who, who juried the show from the Metropolitan Museum is really talking about art as a universal language. Um, that it's really uh, an avenue to come together and, and get a deeper understanding of our own stories through other people's um, sharing of their artistic ability and their soul on, on canvas or uh, on video, as we see in this particular um, exhibition. So I'm really hoping that it, it's an opportunity for Irving to come together and celebrate, um, for, the, um, for the community of the Islamic Center to come and celebrate themselves. And um, I, I'm really hoping that it's just the first opportunity to give a real authentic invitation to everyone in the community. And sometimes that's going to look like particular shows that we reach out and really feature uh, the diversity of our city. But what we're really hoping to do is to do enough of those that everyone can see that all of the program that we do year round is for everyone and that everyone is welcome and we, we want people to find an understanding, a home and a comfort level there at the Art Center. Sounds like everyone will know they're welcome. Thank you for that. Marcy, I want to come back to you and ask you another question because I know there's other exhibits going on as well, including Weaving Paint and Rarely Seen. Can you tell us about these exhibits? Sure, thrilled to. Um, Weaving Paint is a one-person exhibition by Robert Batson. He's a longtime Irving resident and retired architect, and this is a collection of paintings that he's been working on for a number of years. Uh, literally, it's, uh, his inspiration uh, is, is textiles from different areas of the Southwest and Mexico and Central America and South America. And those are areas that he's traveled in extensively and has collected the textiles. And he's taken those designs and textures and interpreted them in paintings. And he started doing this about 30 years ago. He uh, produced a few canvases and then decided to revisit the concept and the inspiration. So he's completed some other canvases in the last year. And so we're featuring those along with some of the textiles in his personal collection. And it's really a, a joyful, fun, uh, colorful exhibit. And uh, these, these paintings are very loose, they're very free, very colorful. Uh, but knowing his background and knowing the connection with, with the textile inspiration is very interesting. Uh, we also have photographs from the National Geographic Society. It's, uh, the title is Rarely Seen. And these are photographs of the extraordinary. Um, and they document natural phenomenon, um, rare artifacts, uh, rare species, um, extraordinary moments captured on film by a number of National Geographic photographers. And uh, it's a beautiful exhibit. They're large scale color prints and uh, really fascinating. Sounds fascinating. Cass, question for you next, and that's the Art Center's Family Series. You want to learn more about that. Uh, we have some video to share from one of the upcoming Great. shows called Jackie Robinson, Everybody's Hero. Can you tell us about it? Well, first I'd like to say that I really do believe in the imperative of live performance and experiencing the arts live in whatever form you are interested in is what the Art Center is about. But Jackie Robinson is about uh, the story of this b groundbreaking baseball player mm -hmm. who was the first African American in uh, professional baseball and how that experience shaped him and others around him and ultimately the entire country. Uh, especially considering baseball is our national pastime. Well, of course, especially on a day like today for those watching live, yes, baseball is a yes, big deal exactly. in North Texas for sure. <laughs> it's a musical <laughs> as well, so a play with music is, is what it's set up to be. Fun, and speaking of fun, we also have video to show from another upcoming show involving dinosaurs. Ooh, everybody's <laughs> favorite, I have a right? three-year-old, so that's a big deal. <laughs> Looks like a lot of fun. Some of the shows do cater to different ages, right? Absolutely, and I think both of those shows are example of things that the entire family could enjoy. There'll be something for everyone in those. Uh, Earth, Dinosaur Zoo Live, I've tried to get for several years, and this is the first year that it's worked out. Awesome. So we're very excited. They'll be here for three performances, two school day matinees, and then one in the evening for families. And they are giant, lifelike puppets, so it involves the art of puppetry as well. And I have been told that they will scare the pants off of you, but <laughs> they're not real. That's good. <laughs> Let's just make sure all the parents tell their kids they look a little scary, but they're not real. They're not so real. So all the dates and times are on the website. And Todd, I have to ask you, how popular are these shows? 
Uh, they're extremely popular, and you know, as a kid growing up uh, in Oklahoma, I was always in the theater. Uh, it's kind of how I got my art start, and and really excited about the arts. So. Uh, I love the opportunity to bring families together and watch the kids uh, in the audience as they partake of this live performance. Um, they are extremely popular, uh, depending on what time of year they're in. They, they sell out really quickly, so, um, but we are offering several opportunities to um, package those deals and buy um, tickets for, for the series. Um, I'll let Cass talk more about that. Right. Okay. Well, there is an opportunity to get four shows uh, for the price of three, but even the single tickets are very affordable. They're seven dollars and fifty cents for adults and six dollars for children, and groups of ten or more. So um, we we try to package these for field trips, and hopefully they'll come to see a show, and maybe they'll do a little tour of the gallery as well. So go. we get a nice mix. We have a place for them to eat lunch. We really just want to make that connection with live visual art, theater art, musical art, so that we are cultivating patrons of tomorrow as well. Yes, and speaking of those patrons for tomorrow or of tomorrow, let's talk more about what you offer for young people. I understand there's a program called Jumpstart Stories and Art. Can you fill us in? Yes, uh, Jumpstart is, I think, one of our most successful programs. Uh, we're in our seventh or eighth year at this point. Uh, we partner with the Irving Public Library and uh, one of the librarians comes over and does a story time segment and then we have an arts and crafts uh, portion of the program and we have different themes for every month and uh, it's good for preschoolers ages two and up and uh, again it's, it's a free free program. It's a great price. It is <laughs> and um, yeah we encourage uh, families and teachers and the children to go through the galleries and, and enjoy that while they're there. And there's also a Saturday school? Yes we offer Saturday school during the school year um, and these are classes uh, that are offered in six week increments and we do that October through May and uh, they're for ages six to ten and we explore subjects such as uh, painting, drawing, uh, sculpture, ceramics. We also often tailor classes that will tie in with our current exhibits as well, uh, whether it's um, Texas history or portraiture or abstract expressionism or maybe one particular artist. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And I know it's not just little ones, it's people of all ages that are visiting. And Todd, I know they're not just coming from Irving or right here in North Texas. The Art Center really is big on tourism and you have people coming from all over. Can you tell us about some of the visitors that come, where they're from and their experience? Absolutely. Most recently for the opening of the uh, Contemporary Islamic Art Show, we had artists from Iran, from Bahrain, Australia, Austria. Wow. Canada, Korea, and from states as far away as Hawaii to come in for the celebration. We also have 11 incredible arts organizations that call the Irving Arts Center home, uh, and they are really responsible for bringing some tourism in. We have um, large shows like uh, from Lyric Theater that's getting ready to do of the I Sing, which will bring in people from New York and all around. So it's really those 11 arts organizations do a lot of programming in that building, really have a wide appeal for the North Texas region as well as uh, surrounding states and further out. So we're really looking at trying to make sure that not only are we serving the citizens, but that we, we stay very attractive to tourism as it is one of the largest drivers for the center. I can imagine. And can you tell me more about the 11 organizations? Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that, that drew me to the Irving Arts Center and to Irving, Texas in particular was this very rare support of these 11 incredible organizations. They are considered the founding organizations for the Irving Arts Center. They, uh, majority of them, we've lost one, added one, but the majority of them started 30 years ago with the building and, and were really the emphasis for, or impetus for building the Irving Arts Center. We have three symphonies, the Irving Symphony, the Las Colinas Symphony, uh, the New Philharmonic Orchestra. We have the Irving Symphonic Band, the Irving Chorale, Momentum Dance Theater. We have Main Stage Irving Col Las Colinas, which is our community theater, Lyric Stage, which is a semi-professional theater, and one of the only opportunities you have to hear a full orchestra um, for Broadway shows. Uh, so that's an incredible experience that I had. didn't even really get on Broadway when I was in <laughs> New York. So you get it right here in Irving. Uh, I think I mentioned all of them. Also the Irving Black Arts Council that does some incredible programming year round. 
Um, so really it is the opportunity to work with both performing and visual arts uh, in one building and to build those community organizations uh, to be as strong as they possi possibly can be. Uh, I think as, as you've been hearing about the programming we have going on, you're starting to see some of the effects of the arts and cultural needs assessment in terms of really looking at access, uh, more free programming, really looking at the pricing for all of our programming, uh, looking at transportation issues, Every, everything that is a perceived boundary for getting anybody in that building that wants to be there, we want to look at and we want to see that we're addressing it. Wonderful. And Cass, I know that there are a lot of arts lovers that are watching now and many of them may be saying, well, I'd like to volunteer my time. Oh. <laughs> what kind of opportunities do you have available? Well, the first that we've already touched on is that there is a docent program um, for the, the galleries. And I think if you are interested in sharing um, knowledge of the arts with others, that that's a perfect place for volunteers. And there is a training program that will give them the mm -hmm. tools they need to do that job. Um, there are other jobs that assist the teachers in our summer program. We do 12 weeks of uh, programming every summer in the form of art camps for kids that now age four up through, I guess, 18 would yeah, be the well, oldest. Right. So there's a little something for everyone and it takes a lot of folks to make that happen. And uh, so a lot of the people that uh, assist are moms or other people interested in education and you can volunteer that way. You could assist as an usher or a, a box office assistant or a special event uh, assistant when we do holiday open house or uh, family fun day or any one of those other public things. All kinds so of opportunities. It, yes. Yeah. Wonderful. And Marcy, what about internship opportunities? Do you offer those as well? We do. We offer three paid internships every summer to oh, assist. Oh, college students just went, what? Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> <Paid>. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, paid. <laughs> um, to assist with our summer camp program. As Cass said, we offer art camps and theater camps. Uh, for a range of ages and uh, every year we invite college students who are interested in studying in some area of the visual or performing arts or museum studies or art education to apply for those internships. Wonderful. Todd, quick question for you. What are the most common questions you get about the Art Center? It's a tough one, huh? That is a tough <laughs> question. Um, you probably get tons of questions. <laughs> You know, I, I think most of the questions surround um, uh, how this incredible city got that asset. If you, you look around in the DFW area, you don't really find what we have anywhere else, mm. uh, a community that is so supportive and, and gives a home to the arts. Um, so we get a lot of questions about that, how that was built, um, and we get to talk a lot about the incredible support we get from the city with those questions. Um, but that that's, and, and what's next? I think everyone is really, um, my predecessor mm -hmm. was there for 20 years and built an incredible foundation and has really, the staff has been there for a long time. The uh, institutional knowledge on the bench is just unbelievable, 25 years and up for the employees. So I think most people are really talking about what's next, which is what we're trying to find out with the arts and cultural needs assessment to make sure that we're um, addressing issues like access and professional development with right. the ability to give to train people to be docents uh, and to get involved. You mentioned the word access, and Cass, I'm going to come to you for the next question because people actually have the opportunity to uh, use the Arts Center by renting it out. What Absolutely. are the actual facilities that are available to do so? We'll rent pretty much anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have two beautiful theaters, uh -huh. one 250 seats and one 700 seats, okay. and those are, of course, available uh, depending on what else is, is booked in there. But we have meeting space, a 3,000 square foot banquet facility. We host a lot of weddings and special events. And are that those the most popular events you have uh, there? I would think? say that probably is a very common thing. But uh, really the most is, are the theater rentals. Mm. There are cultural organizations from all over North Texas that use the Art Center as their performance home because either their community doesn't have something or it's not available. And so there's a huge diversity of programming available through our rental clients as well. Um, but we have the smallest meeting room that can hold 15 up to uh, the, the theater that can seat 700 and occasionally we've rented the entire facility. So how far in advance do you recommend people contact you if they're interested in renting? Well, uh, the farther out the better, just if you have a particular date in mind because we do book uh, 18 months in advance, but if you call me tomorrow and the space is available, we're going to do our best to get you in there. 
I love it. Um, she mentioned call, but people do contact people through different oh, through ways these days, including social media. So that's my question for you, Marcy. I know you guys are also on Facebook, and how important is it for the Arts Center to be on social media? Well, that's really not my area. I would say it's very important, <laughs> so I will pass that over to Cass. <laughs> well, I love the, the growth of our social media. We have a great PR director, and he's done a wonderful job. Um, but I think that's a safe way for people to experience the Arts Center if they've never been. Okay. And so we have a lot of people who hear about us the first time on Facebook, and you can see them having a conversation with their friends yeah. about coming which is very exciting. Uh, I, uh, let's go to that. And it, th this chain happens on uh, Facebook and sometimes on Twitter. And so I think it's really expanded our reach into areas where people may not be from Irving and they don't hear about it through Spectrum or other outlets. And so it's allowed us to reach a whole new generation of, of uh, arts patrons and, yeah. and new arts patrons. There you go, and it looks like Todd wants to add to that. You agree? Well, I was just going to add that the fact that it does reach out a, a, to a new sort of generation because with all of the tools you have available to communicate with people, there are some people who use email and some people who don't. So without going onto social media, without having a real presence on Instagram and Snapchat and all of those places, you're really missing a conversation that's really important for the next generation of arts goers and building that audience um, starting now. You know, I'm glad you mentioned Snapchat. I never go on there, but just to see what y'all put on there, I would check that out because that would be <laughs> a whole lot of fun. You have something you'd like to add also? I was just going to say that, you know, technology has completely changed the way people consume the arts. And um, Todd has encouraged us in his tenure to really reach out and increase the engagement with our audience. And so we have some exciting new programs that we'll be piloting in the coming months that I think will do that and allow people not just to participate by sitting in the theater or walking through the gallery, but by uh, actually engaging in conversation with us. And I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of that. We're looking forward to hearing what this is. It sounds like top secret information, but we'll get it out of y'all soon. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for being here. We appreciate your time and the information you've shared. And then you've been here a little while, but welcome to Texas. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I'm Starlene Stringer. Our next show is coming up on Thursday, November 3rd at 1.30 p.m. And our guest will be from Canine Companions for Independence. Dog lovers will definitely want to see this one. If you have questions about Canine Companions, please email them to ictn at cityofirving.org. And we will get them answered on our next edition of Open Line. See you then. <laughs>